The Marcos regime, spanning over two decades, cast a long shadow over the Philippines. It wasn't just about politics, it was about people. People imprisoned for their beliefs, people tortured for speaking out, people vanishing without a trace. This wasn't ancient history. This happened within our lifetimes. Thousands were detained, suspected of opposing Marcos. Imagine the fear, the uncertainty, locked away without trial. Torture wasn't an exception, it was practically policy. Electric shocks, beatings, waterboarding, these were the tools of Marcos's rule. And then, there were the disappeared. Over a thousand souls vanished, their fates unknown to this day. Families left with empty chairs, unanswered questions, a gaping hole in their lives. These weren't just statistics, these were human beings erased by a regime that saw dissent as a threat. This wasn't governance, it was brutality, and it's our duty to remember to learn to ensure such darkness never engulfs the Philippines again. The numbers are staggering, a chilling testament to the brutality of the Marcos regime. Over 70,000 people detained, their lives upended, their only crime opposing the dictator. Think about that number. A stadium filled with people, all imprisoned for their beliefs. Over 3,000 individuals fell victim to extrajudicial killings, their lives cut short by state-sanctioned violence. Families torn apart, futures extinguished, all because they dared to challenge the regime. And then there are the disappeared. Over 1,000 souls vanished into thin air, their fates unknown, their stories untold. The ambiguity, the lack of closure, added another layer of pain for their loved ones. These weren't just numbers. They were fathers, mothers, sons, daughters, friends. Their stories deserve to be heard, their memories honored, their suffering acknowledged. We must never forget the human cost of Marcos's dictatorship. The darkness of the Marcos regime wasn't some abstract concept. It was real, it was personal, it had names and faces. Like Archimedes Trajano, a student leader who dared to question Imelda Marcos publicly. His reward, tortured and murdered, his body dumped in a street. Or Liliosa Hilao, a young journalist who wrote against the regime's abuses. She was abducted, tortured and killed, her body bearing the marks of her ordeal. These weren't isolated incidents. They were part of a pattern of silencing dissent. Then there's Edgar Jobson, a labor leader who fought for workers' rights. He disappeared in 1982, his fate unknown to this day. His story, like so many others, remains a chilling reminder of the regime's brutality. These stories, though painful, must be told. They remind us of the human cost of dictatorship, the fragility of freedom, and the need to remain vigilant against tyranny. The Marcos regime's impact went beyond individual tragedies. It left deep scars on Philippine society. Fear became ingrained, silencing dissent and stifling critical thinking. People were afraid to speak out, to question authority, to challenge the status quo. Corruption flourished, enriching the Marcoses and their cronies while impoverishing the nation. Public funds were looted, resources plundered, leaving the economy in shambles. The gap between rich and poor widened, creating a legacy of inequality. Trust in institutions eroded, as the judiciary, the military and the media were all used to prop up the regime. This erosion of trust had long-lasting consequences, making it difficult to rebuild democratic institutions. The Marcos years were a dark chapter in Philippine history, leaving a legacy of fear, corruption, and distrust. It's a legacy that the nation is still grappling with today. Price of silence, corruption, and its consequences. The Marcos regime wasn't just about political repression, it was about greed on a massive scale. Corruption was rampant, woven into the fabric of the government. The Marcoses and their cronies treated the national treasury as their personal piggy bank. Billions of dollars were siphoned off, stashed away in foreign bank accounts, invested in lavish properties, and used to fund extravagant lifestyles. Meanwhile, the Filipino people struggled with poverty, lack of basic services, and a crumbling infrastructure. This rampant corruption had a devastating impact on the Philippine economy. It deterred foreign investment, crippled industries, and left the country drowning in debt. The effects of this economic mismanagement are still felt today. The Marcoses' ill-gotten wealth wasn't just a matter of financial impropriety, it was a moral crime. It represented the theft of a nation's future, leaving behind a legacy of inequality and injustice. Whispers of dissent, resistance under a dictatorship. Despite the climate of fear, resistance to the Marcos regime simmered beneath the surface. Students, workers, artists, journalists, and ordinary citizens found ways to raise their voices against oppression. 
underground newspapers and radio stations sprang up, disseminating information and challenging the regime's propaganda. Protest rallies, while often met with violence, became more frequent, a testament to the people's growing discontent. Church leaders, once silent, began to speak out against human rights abuses and corruption. They provided sanctuary to activists, offering a moral voice against the regime's excesses. This growing resistance, fueled by courage and a yearning for freedom, played a crucial role in paving the way for the people power revolution that would eventually topple Marcos. The Road to Revolution, People Power and the Fall of Marcos the assassination of Benigno Nino Aquino Jr., a prominent opposition leader in 1983, proved to be a turning point. His death ignited a wave of outrage and galvanized the opposition, uniting Filipinos from all walks of life. The People Power Revolution, a largely non-violent uprising in 1986, was the culmination of years of growing resistance. Millions of Filipinos took to the streets demanding an end to Marcos's dictatorship. Facing overwhelming pressure from the people, the Catholic Church, and even elements within the military, Marcos fled the country with his family, ending his 21-year rule. The People Power Revolution was a testament to the power of nonviolent resistance, demonstrating that even the most entrenched dictatorships can be overthrown by the will of the people. Unfinished Business The Fight for Justice and Accountability The downfall of Marcos didn't erase the pain and suffering inflicted during his regime. The fight for justice and accountability for the victims of human rights abuses has been a long and arduous one. The Presidential Commission on Good Government, or PCGE, was established to recover the Marcos' ill-gotten wealth, but the process has been hampered by legal challenges and political roadblocks. Efforts to hold those responsible for human rights violations accountable have been met with resistance and delays. Many perpetrators still walk free, while victims and their families continue to seek justice. The fight for justice is a reminder that the wounds of the past run deep and that true reconciliation requires acknowledging the truth, providing redress for victims, and ensuring that such atrocities never happen again. Remembering the past, shaping the future. Remembering the dark side of the Marcos regime isn't about dwelling on the past, it's about learning from it to shape a better future. It's about honoring the sacrifices of those who fought for freedom and ensuring that their struggles were not in vain. It's about educating younger generations about the dangers of dictatorship, the importance of human rights, and the need for vigilance in safeguarding democratic institutions. It's about confronting historical revisionism, which seeks to whitewash the atrocities of the Marcos era and sanitize the image of the dictator. Remembering the past is not about seeking vengeance, it's about pursuing justice, fostering a culture of accountability, and ensuring that the mistakes of the past are never repeated. Never again, safeguarding democracy in the Philippines. The People Power Revolution was a victory for democracy, but it wasn't a guarantee. Safeguarding democratic values and institutions requires constant vigilance and active participation from every citizen. It means upholding the rule of law, protecting freedom of speech and the press, and ensuring free and fair elections. It means holding leaders accountable, demanding transparency, and rejecting corruption in all its forms. It means fostering a culture of critical thinking, encouraging civic engagement, and empowering the next generation to become responsible and informed citizens. The fight for democracy is an ongoing process, a relay race where each generation has a responsibility to carry the torch forward ensuring that the Philippines never again falls into the abyss of dictatorship. The Enduring Legacy Lessons from the Marcos Regime The Marcos Regime, despite its brutality and corruption, left an enduring legacy on the Philippines. It serves as a stark reminder of the fragility of democracy and the importance of safeguarding human rights. It highlights the dangers of historical revisionism and the need to confront the past honestly, no matter how uncomfortable it may be. It underscores the power of the human spirit the courage of those who dared to resist oppression, and the ability of a united people to overthrow even the most entrenched dictatorships. The lessons learned from the Marcos era are not just relevant to the Philippines, they resonate across the globe, serving as a cautionary tale and a source of inspiration for all who strive for freedom, justice, and democracy. Remember, this ain't just history, folks. This is a warning. Don't let it happen again.